Hello everyone, my name is Irina Tkachuk, I'm the top master and the founder of the prominent makeup studio T-Lab. Today's video about lip blushing is highly requested, so we would like to present you the master class on it. Let us go in to help us with that. Let's start. The first step is creating an outline. I usually use a red gel pen, don't like to use pencils. I prefer when the outline is well defined, that is how you can see some asymmetry. At first, we need to wipe the lips with some corhexidin. Remove lipstick with a makeup remover if needed. After that, wipe them with some chlorhexidine. There is no makeup on these lips, so I'm going to use chlorhexidine right away. When making the outline, I firstly find the center point, where the middle of Cupid's bow is. I mark it, then I'm marking the two points of the Cupid's bow. One and two. The shape is quite distant on this side. Here it's not as clear, just because the lip isn't so full here. I can lift this line for a millimeter and visually correct the shape. Having marked the cupid's bow, I'm going to start shaping. Never try to fill the corner with pigment. If you do so, it's going to look like there is an angular chulitis. That's why we fill it in until the edge of the corner. When the lips are closed, they form such a cute and tiny point. I used to fill the entire surface of lips with color, but now I only draw a thin line. I like it more this way. I've made the outline, it's not perfect, in different places it might be a bit thinner or thicker, it is going to be corrected. So, I approximately mark the outline to have a basic understanding how I'm going to work further. If you have a clear contour, it's when this part of the lip is so full that the contour is standing out. Then you shouldn't overline. First of all, from the side it is going to look like an additional lip. It wouldn't look aesthetically pleasing. Secondly, the pigment is going to fade differently on lips and skin. In six months, you will see the different shades. The difference will be obvious. That's why the lip blushing is not about lip augmentation. If you want to have bigger lips, try hyaluronic acid lips injections. I can, of course, correct the shape for a millimeter, However, I don't recommend overlining for the whole centimeter. Next, I'm going to use such a stick. You can also use a toothpick and attach a cotton ball on top. It's thin and can correct and make the line thinner. I don't use cotton swabs, those are uncomfortable to use. I purchased these ones. Let's start wiping the line trying to make it as even and thin as possible. If it's not even, then the outline won't either. You can also notice some asymmetry. See, I wiped it 
and the line is uneven. I hadn't seen that initially. There is micellar water on the cotton pad. I wet the stick with it and carefully correct the outline. Ask the customer to fold lips tightly to see if the both sides are even. Correct those if needed. When the lips are relaxed, it's not as easy to see some mistakes. You won't be able to pay attention to those. You should always look from different angles. Here the corners come to one point, but here the bottom corner is further. I need to fix that. It looks beautiful when the corners can converge at one point. Now they do. Smile, please. Make sure to have a look from the side, so these lines ascend nicely, so that they don't look rough. Some masters use a white pencil to secure the outline. I don't do that, as I can see the shape without any additional steps. Then I show the outline to the client, approve it, and proceed to the choice of the color. I want to run a giveaway. A month after this video comes out, we will choose the most interesting comment of our subscribers. This person will get an hour-long Skype questions and answers conference on this topic. The results will be announced on our Instagram account Tila. Subscribe so you don't miss it. All the details are in the description below. I'm going to apply the numbing cream. As usual, I've prepared the ink cups. We've chosen the color. The color is natural by shine. It's a natural and gentle shade. I'm going to use Sustain as a secondary numbing. We'll apply the PMU cream as the primary anesthesia with the help of a crop needle syringe. I'll apply it on the surface of the lips and a little bit over the outline. I won't put the plastic wrap so the lips are not too numb. This will be enough for the first pass. Like this, very careful. I use the syringe to have a good control of how the substance is being distributed. A needle can be cropped with a pair of scissors for metal. I also apply the numbing gel on eyelids in the same way.
I put a lot of anesthesia. Especially on the most sensitive central part over the outline, on the bottom, and on the top. There are a lot of nerve endings, so it may be very painful here. I will use an ink machine Scorpion. I have used it a lot lately. I'll start with the sharp needle of Quadrant cartridge 1RL 0.3. Insert the cartridge. At first the speed is 7.2. Time 10-15 minutes for anesthesia to work. As I've already mentioned, I don't put the plastic wrap so that the lips are not too numb. I put a light pressure, enough for the lips to stay numb. During the process, I'm going to apply some more sustain. I wrap the machine up like this. Some people are bothered with the shape of it, but there's nothing to worry about. Everything is wrapped and secured. Put sustain into the cup so it is comfortable to work with. Shake the pigment and put it into the cup too. Fifteen minutes have passed. I carefully wipe the numbing gel away. You can either use a cotton swab or a cotton pad. Be careful not to wipe the outline. It should stay. Everything is perfect. The shape is clear. As I've already mentioned, I'm going to use the ink machine Scorpion. The voltage on the block critical is 7.2. I've settled the needles out hand for 3 mm. Start working from the outline. Don't stretch it too tight. I push my finger on the facial skin around the lip. The outline is clear. I can see where to work. The needle is perpendicular to the lip surface. I work with the outline in the overlap manner. This time, a clear outline is not what I'm going to do. That's why I'll just make one pass. My goal is to distribute the pigment evenly. This will secure the color and shape of the lips. I take a cotton swab and wipe it a little bit to see if it took. There is a light contour. It is enough. If it's not comfortable for you to use this method, you can grab the lip from both sides. When it's curved, you can start filling the pigment in. You must go further, following the rule of 80 to 20. 80% 80 of work should be concentrated on the previous spot. Move forward just for 20%. Don't rush to the new spot. It's like you stay on it for some time. You should move slowly by 80 to 20 rule. Little by little you move along the outline. Видно? 
It can be seen that the light line is left. If you follow this technique and don't get stuck at one place, the outline wouldn't look rough. It will just help you to follow the plant shape. There is a frequent problem with the cupid's bow, it is difficult to fixate it. You can grab it like this, in this way it is much easier to work with it. I hold the lip from both sides and stretch it. The pin tuck secures the process. Use the 80 to 20 rule to move forward slowly. The last point was here, but I go back to this spot and pull the line further. Don't try to fill in every millimeter. Pigment takes worse at corners, so focus on that area more. Here you can see the line, it is not clear, just to help you see the shape. Then I'm going to go through the lip tissue to open it a little bit, not to color it, just to prepare the surface for the secondary numbing application. Apply light pressure on the lip with your fingers and turn it out a little bit. I use light blushing strokes. There's going to be a little bit of color build up. There is no point in preparing the tissue with just a needle with no color. Some pixels are going to stay, but now I'm not trying to even the color. I don't hold a tight stretch. Straight the lip a little bit, just enough to work comfortably. If I don't stretch it, the needle will keep getting stuck in lip creases. Don't get stuck at one place, quickly move around the sections. Wipe the pigment off, we'll see if the color took. The color being built up can be clear under anesthetic. If you look closely, you can see the light outline. It is enough. It's supposed to be more distinct if you follow the contour technique. Apply the sustain. And 
Let's move to the bottom lip. Repeat the same steps on another lip. Stretch it a little bit for the lip to be flat. I don't pull a clear line. Use light blushing strokes and remember about the 80 to 20 rule. 80% of work should be concentrated on the previous spot. Move forward just for 20%. This is highly important. If you pull a straight line, it can either lead to a very defined outline or you will just disappear. Don't forget to go back. Due to the quick and light movements, you can gently fixate the shape. It will look natural. If you have any doubts, just check it from time to time. I advise that to all my students. See? I'm wiping it and the line is secured. The strides are quite long. Small strides provide a higher level of saturation. I don't need that now. This section doesn't take the pigment that well, so I'll dedicate more attention to it. You can put more strokes on the central part of the lower lip. Use brushing strokes. Your needle needs to move quickly. Only the tip of the needle needs to touch the lip and you need to feel that. Keep a very light pressure. Look, this is enough. You don't need a clear outline. Also, don't forget, I finish at this spot, but I begin from this one and pull the lip further. I use the rule of 80 to 20 throughout the whole procedure in different parts of the face. So, you should go back to the previous stroke, focusing for some time at the section. You can achieve the gradient effect by not putting too much pressure, but by just lightly layering the color. With every pass you get a more pronounced and airy color. There's a gap here, I need to apply more. I will push the lip a little bit. I keep the same pressure on the needle, but stretch the lip a bit more. I'll work on this spot a little more. Now there's a line. Now we'll go through the bottom lip. Scull the lip tissue a little for it to take the pigment. See, I don't stretch. I push the lip a little for it to uncover and be more comfortable to work with. Don't sit in such position. In that case, you will put the machine at an acute angle and the needle will be inserted as following. Keep the machine at the angle of 90 degrees. Otherwise, this can lead to an injury that will cause severe swelling.
The healing process will take a longer time and the pigment fixation can be worse. If you put too much pressure, the lip tissue will push the pigment out during the healing process. It will all peel off. Wipe the pigment off. The skin got pale because of anesthetic. Now the contour is clear. Everything's in its place. The shape is beautifully fixed. Having healed the contour isn't going to stay. If I don't have another pass on it, it's not going to stay. I'm going to overlap the color on it and the original shape will stay in place. Let's apply anesthetic. I use sustain as anesthetic. The skin is resting and now I'm about to start the coloring process. It's difficult to work with the corners because it's not easy to stretch them. That's why we uncover the corner and use not horizontal, but diagonal strokes. Use quick and light strokes. I'm always following the 80 to 20 rule. 80% of work should be concentrated on the previous spot. Move forward just for 20%. That's how I fill the color in. I don't rush. Don't try to put the color everywhere as fast as possible. We worked here and all the pixels are clear and in place. Follow the same instructions and move along the lip. I use slower motions when I'm near the outline. Stay here a bit. Moving from it, repeat the same instructions as in the previous section. Strokes are close to each other. Keep very light pressure. Gradually move to the mucous membrane. I uncover the lip to have a better look. If lips are small, it may be uncomfortable to uncover them. You can put a cotton pad on her teeth. The pigment won't leak and it will be easier to uncover the lip and see it more clear. I don't try to fill in every millimeter, I go back to the previous spot. I finish here, but I go back a bit, not to have any rough joints. If you try to have tight strokes, you will fail and they will look heavy. That's why I start from the previous spot. This is an 80 to 20 rule. Remember to use it. Then you will achieve the even and airy color. When you overlap the colors, the pixels will blend and joints will not be seen. I fill in the color to the mucous membrane a bit. I'm uncovering the lip. Look at the way I grab the lip. 
When I move to the next section, I use my fingers to change the lip position. You can see that this section is what's worked at, this one isn't. The color is building up. Already some results can be seen. If you stretch it, you can see the pixels. Even one pass is enough to achieve a light effect. It all depends on what kind of result you want to achieve when the healing process is done. If you want higher saturation, then three, four more passes will be needed. If a more light one, then you do one main pass like this. The second pass will be used for filling the gaps. Usually, that's the zone near the outline and the juncture zone. Don't tear it. What happens when you stretch the lips tightly? You should have a stretch, otherwise you will just injure the tissue to no effect. You should do it in moderation. The tighter you stretch the tissue, the thinner it becomes. The needle is so sharp that it will anyway pierce the surface. Moreover, lips are a very gentle zone and I see no point in stretching it too much. That's the way to get more wounds and severe swelling. There are so many capillaries. It's easier to be injured than, for example, eyebrows. Don't stretch much, the skin do make it turn white because of stretching. Don't rush. I finished here, but go back there. This is crucial. Probably the most important and the biggest mistake is when masters try to move along quickly. Permanent lip makeup is quite a monotonous work. Why? You need to be very accurate about your movements. You should move the machine in a balanced way, have a steady hand. The reason of the uneven color is when you chaotically feel the color in different places. In that case, you will not be satisfied with the result. If you follow such a uniform scheme, you will be more accurate and the color will be more even. So when it heals, you won't need to cover some spots once again. It won't lead to the gentle gradient effect. Look, the pixels are placed perfectly along the lip surface. The zone near the outline is usually thicker, that's why you should focus on it more. This juncture zone is always moistened. That's why when I work on it, I do one or one and a half passes more. When it heals, more pigment goes away. If I initially do more passes, then when the zone heals, it will have the same shade as the other section. Work slowly. Of course, I don't get stuck at one spot. However, I also don't do white strokes to work quicker. Get even slower near the outline. Apply some pigment. Change the direction to the inside and apply strokes 80 to 20 or 70 to 30 but not 50-50. You should go back more. The more, the better.
I have worked with and near the contour. Now I'm slowly going down. One half of the upper lip is ready, another isn't. The difference is obvious. If the color was brighter, the contrast would be even more noticeable. There is a natural color. Hence, don't expect an intense result. Don't forget what kind of work you're doing. If your client wants a nude shade, don't try to turn it into a bright brown lipstick. Nude is supposed to stay nude. The lips aren't supposed to be heavily covered with pixels. I'm flattening, but not stretching the tissue. I'm uncovering the lip to have a better look where I'm filling the color in. Don't forget to turn the client's head. I often see when my students start to bend down. In that case, you will put the needle at the wrong angle and the result will be not as planned. A client can turn her head, don't worry if you adjust it a bit. You should do everything that will make the process more comfortable. Who is the nude technique good for? Firstly, that's in trend. But it can also correct the shape. In this case, I'm working on the fabulous lips. But on the one side the contour is clear, and on the other side it's indefinite. This may be due to, for example, frequent rashes of herpes. The pigment goes away. Lip augmentation can lead to the color going away. Besides, this can be connected to age-related changes. Eventually, the lip pigmentation fades away. Such a gentle nude technique can fix such flaws. 
It wouldn't look like you're wearing lipstick, but the natural shade will make the lips look put together. The color doesn't look strident. Now we see that the shade is very gentle and natural. When it heals, it will even look more natural. Not everybody will even realize that you had something done with your lips. Like that's your natural fresh color. You can also freshen your lips up. Young ladies can have no problems with the lip shade, but the color could be improved. This can also be fixed. The bluish lip shade can be corrected with the help of the watercolor technique. This is the most natural and unnoticeable technique. The watercolor technique can also be done as a tint. Have you heard of it? It's when you put some lipstick, wipe it, but the pigment stays on the lips. How is the watercolor technique similar? The zone next to the outline will be lighter, the focus will be in the central part. That's how you achieve the tint effect. The same technique I'm showing, just arrange the layers in a different way. Then you won't pull the outline, you will do the first pass right away. A life hack for those who is scared to lose the outline after the first pass. It's quite difficult to work with nude shades if you don't feel the skin and you don't have a steady hand. But the outline needs to be secured. A nude shade is light and not always easy to see. So you can choose any scarlet shade warm red or coral. Mix it with either water for injection or a specialized diluter. Just to scale down the color consistency, its brightness. Do the first pass with this color within the outline. The color will take and you will for sure see the shape. During the healing process it will fade away. One way or another it will never spoil the final result. Then you get the chosen nude color and fill it in. I want to finish the upper lip, that's why I will apply a bit of anesthetic. I'm going to cover the corner. Remember that the corners don't take the pigment well. That's why I'm stretching it and focusing it for some time, but don't put too much pressure. Don't put too much pressure. The lip tissue is very thin. Don't push it. If you put too much pressure, you will get heavy pixels. I'm staying on the corner section for some time for it to take the color. I'm not rushing. Here the scheme is 90 to 10. I go back to the previous stroke for 90% and I go further just for 10%. In this case you'll get a nicely colored corner. Don't keep anesthetic a long time for the second time. I will make them too numb. 
I have already kept it for a long time, and this pot turned white. I should have wiped them earlier. If the same happens to you, just apply some Vaseline. The Vaseline will make the tissue softer and it will be easier to work. I'm going to do another pass, but won't try to fill a lot of color in. Just to see where there is a lack of pigment. You can fill more color to the corners, the rest may be lighter. Once it heals, it will have practically the same shade. Maybe slightly different undertones. The more you move to the mucous membrane, the more severe swelling will be. But you should go there, otherwise there will be a big color difference. That's why the swelling can stay there for two hours. I believe it's not a big deal if you want to get a beautiful outcome. Just let your client know that the first two hours after the procedure they will look like ducks. It will slowly desist, so you won't have to take a day off. The lip healing process is quick. On the second or third day they peel. The injury is minor. Regeneration is high in this area. It peels off after the second or third day. As aftercare, I recommend wiping the lips with chlorhexidine and apply the given Vaseline. It also consists of oils and vitamins. Specifically Vaseline, because it's difficult to find a lip balm that consists of Vaseline. All ingredients but Vaseline. You don't need to heal wounds, because there's none of them. If there were any wounds, you would have to use bipanthin, for example, some people want to use traumil, but there is no big injury to use this cream. This pass is needed to check if I have any gaps, and I must check this part. Here, look at it. A lot of masters forget about it. I go there a little bit, very lightly. One pass is enough here. You don't have to put much pigment there. But don't push the lips. The more you stretch and push them, the bigger injury will be. Here I overlined for just a millimeter. That's why I'll apply it more color here. It may be a bit different, but the color will be even once it heals. Here, half a millimeter of skin. I always have the cotton pad in another hand, I wipe with it and check the result. Even if you pull the outline once again, follow the same rule of 80 to 20. Don't draw a straight line, not to apply the excess amount of pigment where it's not needed. Now 
Use the overlapping motions. A straight line will look heavy. This spot usually stays a bit white, especially the center of it. You should stay on it more. I'm going to work on it and the swelling will appear, but it will look worse if it's untouched. Really not good looking. This part looks awful when a girl with plump lips smiles. The part on the upper lip is finished. I've applied the adenamin gel. I just need to put some pixel there, but the tissue is overworked. That's why I put some of it on the outline for a few seconds. I'm wiping it now. I'll work on one section of the bottom lip. Don't forget to uncover the corners to color them. I'll need to work on a few spots. Go up along the vermilion border, line to line. Yeah. 
I see I overstretched the skin. Although I worked very lightly, but there is a small injury. I put a lighter stretch and the skin already looks different. The pinpoint bleeding may appear sometimes, but it is not excessive and not frequent. Some ichor may be discharged, but if it's along the whole lip tissue, you need to change something. Keep a lighter stretch or vice versa flatten the lip, adjust the strokes, change the voltage. Try out and see how the skin responds. I got distracted and the skin is overstretched. The pressure is the same, but the skin got thinner because of stretching. So the risk of injury of course is bigger. I worked near the outline and moved to another section. Sometimes the cups for ink can be of plastic. I also used to have those. During the study my students used to hit the cup with the needle. The tip of the needle is fragile and can bend if it happens. You may not notice it right away, but the pinpoint bleeding may start when you work because the needle tip is bent. It tears the skin. Pay attention to that. A cotton pad may help you to check that. Take a dry one and when you put a needle on it, nothing should get stuck. If the needle gets hooked with the cotton, then the needle tip is bent. I recommend to use silicone cups to avoid that problem. They are very comfortable to use. Even if you hit the cup, the needle tip doesn't bend. If such a problem happens during the procedure, you'll injure the lips. Pigment won't take as the tissue is too wounded. The pigment will go away with the peeling. If you work on the inner section, turn the lip so it's comfortable to see and work on. I follow the 8 to 20 rule. I finished here, but I start the next section from here. I'm going along the outline. I use the green soap during the procedure to wipe the pigment. I don't use any other options. I have it in the container next to me. Wipe the cotton pads with it to see everything clearly. Don't 
Don't use micellar water or chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine can make the skin dry. Green soap with antiseptic effect is developed for such a purpose. It doesn't cost so much. Buy the concentrated one and make a 1 to 10 dilution. Put it in a bottle, which will be wrapped during the procedure. And wipe the cotton pad with it. Perfect option. Here you should also uncover the lip and move to the mucous membrane. It will be seen if it's uncolored, especially if the mouth is open. When the mouth is open, the bottom lip uncovers. Very lightly, so the color is gradual and even. The color will go away from here a bit when it heals. Here the pixels are clear. The pixels visually change the color to the natural one. It will look pretty when it heals. It would look balanced. Also, when you're finishing the work, don't get scared if you see tiny white gaps. It's not a big deal. That's just anesthetic. Look at this white ring. The anesthetic reduces the blood vessels and repels the blood from these spots. The skin turns white. When the anesthetic stops working, the blood circulation recovers and the blood vessels will be back to normal. The lip color will have its natural color. Our aim is to do the nude, watercolor technique, whatever you call it. How is it done? There's supposed to be a certain compactness of pixels for a skin centimeter. There is an appropriate amount of pixels, so the lip surface can be seen. This will give the watercolor effect. If you need a lipstick effect, then you need to do two, three more passes. There should be no gaps. Don't confuse the watercolor and the lipstick effect. Some masters try to cover the gaps and get heavy looking lips. Also, don't use the brown shades on lips. I'm frequently asked about it. I gave a master class in another city. There was a model who wanted to have brown lips. She brought a brown lipstick. You should understand that an ordinary lipstick and permanent makeup are completely different things. The lipstick stays on the surface of lips, but the permanent makeup penetrates into them. If you put a brown shade in your lips, in the end you will get a blue, gray, green color. There are also nude light brown shades. I wouldn't recommend those either. Why? There's lots of white pigment in those, that's titanium oxide. It will serve as a corrector. It will look good for three to six months, but then the heavy titanium molecule will be released. It looks ugly and difficult to get rid of it. That's the reason why I don't recommend using whitish colors. Sooner or later it will lead to a not pretty outcome. Think ahead what you're going to do with the client in a year or two. And what the client is supposed to do then? The only way to solve that is a remover. 
Laser even won't get that. Everybody likes natural beauty. The natural lips are of pink and red colors, but not of brown or white ones. It's not comfortable to work with the bottom lip in one stroke, especially the central part. That's why I work as well as I can at the bottom lip, near the outline. Go back and forth a few times and start going up from here, going inwards. Slowly. Follow the 80 to 20 or 90 to 10 rule. Uncover the lip a bit, go up. I didn't put enough color to the mucous membrane, as the lip got dry. I've wiped it and we'll finish it now. You can do slanted movements. The stroke direction was to this side, and now it will be diagonally different, in order to put the pixels diagonally. Move close to the outline and change the direction a bit and the thickness. And from here, go up or inwards. It's uncomfortable to uncover the corner. What should I do? You can change the position of your arm like this and uncover the corner. Look, it's much more comfortable to work with. Everything is clearly seen. If you want to 
If you want to apply the color in words, you can sit like this. Now you can have a better view. It's not convenient to work from this side. The corner is finished. I need to do one more pass on the bottom lip. The final one. I'll apply some numbing cream. The color took beautifully. This section is the most painful and problematic one. That's why I'll focus on it. There is a lack of color in the corner. I'll fix that. I'm moving along near the outline and slowly down. Notice, when I'm doing this, my elbow is fixated on the client. So my elbow is steady. If I change the hand position, I press the elbow to my body. The elbow needs to be fixed for your hand to be steady. There is a white spot, I stay on it very lightly. I'm always overlapping the color. Here stayed a little. If the lips are injected with hyaluronic acid, the swelling can be more severe. When you create an injury, the hyaluronic acid will also store some liquid. Your injury plus liquid equals swelling. Explain this to the client, so nobody gets scared. Swelling process can be of various forms. It happens on an individual base. Some don't get it at all. But some will live with huge lips. Don't panic. You should ask your client enough questions to have a clear understanding of the final result. Keep in mind that the injected lips will swell more. In this case, the lips were injected six months ago. But the swelling is mild, almost not visible. The injury is also minor, almost no pinpoint bleeding during the procedure. The bottom lip is more prone to this problem than the upper one, so don't be scared of it. Almost no bleeding on the upper lip, a little bit on the bottom one though.
I'm finishing the lips. I'm stretching the lip to see if there are any gaps. It might seem like there is a white spot like this. However, when I stretch the lip, I can clearly see that everything is covered with pixels. The numbing cream may cause the white color. Stretch the lip to check. If there are pixels put evenly, as for example on the white spot and next to it, it is seen when you stretch it, so you shouldn't put any more color here. If you do so, this spot will be bright one once the anesthetic wears off. The pixels will guide you. Stretch the tissue and see if there is enough amount of them. The anesthetic can confuse you. You might put a few bright spots all over the lips. I suggest to fill in less color than more. If you have any doubts, better to stop. You can always do any corrections at a touch-up. It is easier than to delete, lighten those, etc. If you are not sure, just let the client go, let the lips heal. You'll have another look at the touch-up. Don't put a tight stretch on the mucous membrane. Because it's thin, it will look heavy, not pretty. Better to work lightly. It will look like a natural lip color. The pixels here can look rough after healing.
We have finished the procedure of the watercolor lips. Here are the result. I'm very satisfied with it. Hera also loves it. We'll wait when the healing process is over. The color will be more gentle, the outline will look lighter. That's it. The procedure was successful, the swelling is mild. I've applied the thin layer of Vaseline, and I recommend the same aftercare until it heals. 3-4 days, and the lips are fabulous. Thank you for attention. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the bell icon to get notifications about our new videos. And write in the comment section any questions you have. I'll do my best to answer those. Bye!